good morning everybody it is day two of the adventure down to corpus christi stopped in Sealy, texas last night y'all know that if you watched yesterday's video but it is a few minutes after seven um got up around 6 30 or so kind of slept in a little bit because i stayed up for a while last night trying to edit this dang video from yesterday's drive um and i was hoping to have it up last night but it took so dang long because I was having an issue with some of the audio on the clips. I don't know what was going on. Um, finally got it figured out. I don't know if it was just whenever I uploaded them to the computer, something just went wrong or what. I, I don't know. But So I was hoping to have it uploaded this morning while I was getting ready. But we were 9% into uploading yesterday's video. And we still have an hour and a half remaining. So that's hotel Wi-Fi for you. So... And I'm not waiting here for an hour and a half for this thing to upload, so I'm thinking I'm probably just going to upload this tonight when I get to the hotel first thing, and we're just going to be a day behind. So, you know, that's that's kind of what, what it's going to be. I made double upload to catch up, but looks like this little series going down to Corpus is going to be a day behind because just technical issues and slow Wi-Fi. So it's going to be a while, and I, I'm impatient because we still have a pretty good drive to go down to Corpus. We're like three hours or something away which you know I guess I just can't wrap my head around that I guess I just Texas is such a huge state it looks like you're not that far away but you really are so we're gonna quickly uh, pack everything up get the truck loaded up and hit the road because if I plan on fishing today at all uh, I, I gotta get moving so I'm going to quickly get everything loaded up I'm probably gonna cancel this upload because this is just ridiculous and I'll see y'all in the truck. All right, so a little bit of good news. I guess whenever I looked at how long it should take me to get there inside, um, either the Apple Maps were taking me some stupid route that was like four hours, or my location was not accurate for some reason. Maybe it was still thinking I was further north. But Waze is saying I'm gonna be there at 1051, which will be a two hour and 58 minute drive. And that's not to Corpus Christi, that's in Corpus Christi at Waypoint Marine where I'm picking up this uh, standard mapping chip for my Lowrance so I can, you know, have a good map over here and not run the ground and tear my boat up. So we picked up a little bit of time. I figured it was going to take like closer to four hours. Obviously, you know, that's right at three hours and we're going to have to stop and I need to put gas in the boat. I need to get something to eat this morning. Um, they have breakfast here, but I was ready to just hit the road and get moving. So, need to get something to eat. Need to get... I'll have enough gas to make it there, well, by one mile. So, I'm going to have to probably get gas. Alright, so we got the chip. I'm actually at the hotel right now. Uh, I was going to record all this right here when I was at Waypoint. But there was a guy trying to back out of the parking spot. And I was blocking him in, so I decided just to do it here. So, at the hotel, I'm going to try and check in early. Just to get my room, I wanted to come see how everything looks. There's a boat ramp not that far from me that I'm probably going to go at. I'm going to try and go out this afternoon. The wind has picked up. It's not terribly bad. It's blowing like right at 20. Shouldn't get much worse than this. So I might go try and fish some areas that are kind of protected from the wind. And then tomorrow, go fish some of the more open areas. Because every morning, it's flat. And then in the afternoon, the wind picks up and it just blows like crazy. And apparently, that's what it does every day this time of year down here. These flags are standing out, and if you look way out there in the distance, all those wind turbine deals way out there, those are everywhere. I know this they're really far away, so the camera's only picking up on the ones that are closer, but as far as you can see, there are wind turbines. I mean, it's, you know, because the wind blows like crazy here. But, uh, but I'm gonna try and check in early. Uh, there's not a whole lot of cars here. I know it's the middle of the day, but I think maybe they'll have my room ready. And I'll go throw my bags in, use the restroom real quick, and then check the wind forecast again, and maybe go fish one of these, one of these areas kind of protected from the wind. There's a boat ramp, like I said, not too far from here. Here at the boat ramp, um, seems to be a really nice boat ramp. Wish we had nice boat ramps in Panama City, but we don't. Um, it's actually. It's choppy right here, but the wind is really being blocked by this this land here, I guess you can call it. I mean, 
there's like little islands and stuff and a little barrier island that goes around all this and it's really not all that bad um i was getting a little worried at first because as i was coming in there's like 20 boats going out and i'm the only boat coming down the road to go toward the boat ramp they're all looking at me like i was crazy um and i very well could be but it, it doesn't really look that bad um, i'm sure if you went out in the middle of the the middle of the bay it'd be terrible but right here it seems to be blocked pretty well so i'm gonna get the boat ready grab a couple rods i'm not I'm, i may not even make a cast today um i'm just gonna kind of ride around cover some water do a little looking um just get a feel for it if i find an area that looks fishy i'll fish it for a little bit but i just really want to get the boat in the water and just see what it's kind of all about over here and uh just just give it just look around really just cover a little bit of water so that is exactly what we're gonna do all right guys we have a slight issue i was going to put the plug in and i noticed my transducer here is literally hanging on by like nothing um there's like one screw holding on to this thing um my other two screws are vanished and i know it wasn't like this earlier because i actually checked last night to make sure my plug was out because i went through a lot of rain and it had been raining a lot and i did not see this hanging out like this so i'm going to have to figure out if i can uh patch this thing enough to make it through the day and then tonight try and get it fixed correctly um because that probably won't last five minutes on the water. And yes, I know that's not the proper way to mount one, but I don't like putting holes in the boat. And it works really good whenever it's attached. So hopefully, uh... oh crap. All right, well, I'll figure this out. I got, I un it was only holding on by this one screw, which is, which is right there. Um, this broke out, that little plastic stud or whatever that holds the uh, other side in. I had four. I had these, this one, this one, this one, and this one. These don't reach. They are out here. There's nothing to put those on with. So these two screws are just gone. That one's in there fine. That stud's still there. That one's broke out. So what I'm going to probably do is reattach it right there and right there for tonight. Go get another screw, put one there, and see if I can do something about that. But at least I should be able to patch this to make it through today good enough. So, oh... Just one thing after another, guys. I'm telling you. I mean, and I was just thinking, you know, I made it down here. I got all the way to the water, all the way from Penwell City Beach, uh, with other than a speeding ticket, no real issues mechanically on the trailer, or truck, or anything. And then we got this. But luckily, this is not the end of the world. This is very fixable. Um, I should be able to get it patched enough to get out there today so oh i'm glad i noticed it though well here's the other problem this would probably be about a two minute fix if i had somebody else here because you can't reach your arm down in there to screw in the screws and have another hand under there to hold it in place at the same time so what would be a two minute fix if i had one more set of hands is going to end up probably being a pain in the butt well i know what you're thinking right now you're probably saying well michael you know if you wouldn't have taken out that first screw and just tightened it up then you know you could have just took the other screw out and moved it to a different hole and you've been fine well you know what hindsight is 2020 but the reason i took it out is because i wanted to see how well that hole it was that screw was in is in there and it is cracking some 
but I believe it'll be good enough for today. You know, like I said, I know for a fact this was perfectly fine when I left the house. And uh, I know it was fine yesterday. I looked at it uh, last night. So, I am I guess maybe something from the road? You know, I don't really recall running over anything or going over anything that could have hit it, but that's all I can figure. Because I know this boat, last time it came out of the water, it was not like that. So, I'm assuming it has to be something from this trip. So, we're going to try and get it fixed. Alright guys, so I got it kind of fixed. Um... I really wouldn't even call this fixed. I would call this halfway patched for now. If I was smart, I probably would just not fish right now, not put the boat in the water, not risk this thing coming off and getting messed up because I'm going to really need it later on in the week. But I'm already right here. This has been a long road to get to the dang boat ramp, and I'm not going to let this deter me now. So I put the screws I could get in that were able to hold the transducer somewhat back in. But... It was still really wobbly and really loose and it made me super nervous. So I did some serious redneck engineering. So, y'all check this out. Oh yeah. Had to do it to him with the duct tape. I got that sucker duct taped on there. And it's pretty. I mean, it's got a little play if you push down on it pretty hard. I'm pushing down on it pretty hard. Um, and, of course, you know, the water's going to push up on this. So, you know, in theory, it shouldn't really ever pull down on that tape. Um, it, you know, the water's going to push on this and push it up against this whole shot plate. So, I got that sucker duct taped on there. I'm hoping that'll be enough to keep it on there for me to ride around for a little bit. I eased back up through a little cut and uh, I'm back here in this little cove. There's a lot of oyster beds and grass and there's these mangroves everywhere and it looks so good. Like this, I mean, just the water here looks so good. There's bait everywhere. Um, tons of mullet, tons of just bait. I, I haven't really got to see exactly what kind of bait it is. It's just small bait, finger mullet, big mullet. And I've seen some, I've made like two casts. I've been on the phone just kind of watching, going on the trolling motor, seeing what I move. Um, I've, I've seen some swirls and some pushes that certainly are bigger. I'm assuming they're redfish, um, maybe giant mullet. The water's got this stain kind of color to it, but it's not that tea colored stain you see like at home when it rains. It's it's kind of a milky kind of green is the only way I can really explain it. I know that's not probably a really good explanation, but the water is just moving like crazy. I'm kind of out here. I know you can hear the wind blowing, but where I'm at right now, it's kind of protected. The water is. There's just a little ripple on the water. Um, and because of all this surface activity, I've been, uh, I've made a couple casts just now with the top water. Um, and I'm just going to kind of just fan cast this top water out here. I mean, I got birds behind me on that sandbar that's a good sign i got bait everywhere that's a good sign and i got oysters i got grass i got water movement uh there's mangroves i mean i've seen mullet tailing got really excited from a distance i thought there was some redfish tailing but it was mullet um there's another bird over there i mean this just looks so good Trying to see if we can find some redfish or trout. Obviously, I enjoy catching redfish, but I'd be happy with a trout too. So, because of all this activity on the surface, all this bait coming up and swirling and flipping and popping and everything, I'm throwing this top water, um, and I'm gonna see if I can get bit. So I have never caught a fish in the state of Texas. I know that bird wasn't a fish, but that was about to be the first thing I caught in Texas was a freaking seagull. If that happened, I probably would go home. Well, that's a start. That's a start.
out of what appeared to be a trout. Wasn't a big one. But we had what appeared to be a trout in the state of Texas come up and try and eat my plug. He, he went after her right at the boat. It's like he uh, came up for it, saw the boat or something, felt the boat, and said, deuce. Oh my God. Oh. What was that? What was that? Do trout jump like that here? Does that happen? Do they do that? That wasn't a ladyfish. That thing was black, green colored. Okay. Two fish, two casts. Didn't get either one of them. I felt that fish. He hit the rod. I felt him hit it. Two fish, two casts. I'm out a little bit deeper. Something big just moved right by the boat. Maybe I'm in the water. Maybe I was up a little bit too shallow. Let's see if I can catch one. Come on, let me hook one. Whatever that was, came clean out of the water, flipped end over end. I mean, he jolted it and then went. I have never, if that was a trout, I've seen trout jump, or big trout at home sometimes will jump, but never one that size jump, and never, never end over end like that. That was crazy. Okay, this might be dumb. I'll take this off, and I'm gonna change colors. So many mullet here, so many, what appears to be white bait, and I'm thinking maybe these fish are just sensitive to color. So I'm going to take the same exact lure. Oh, should I downsize? I'm going to try and downsize. Because I was going to put this on because it looks like a mullet. But I'm, they're not getting it. So I'm thinking about downsize. I'm going to lose a little casting distance here. But... Because now I'll be trying a new color. And a new size. I like these baits because they, when you pause them, they sit low in the water. They have super strong hooks. And they're kind of loud, which is perfect for right now. Oh, I don't know what to do. I kind of want to tie on that bigger one. Oh my God. I guess I'm not tying on the bigger one. Okay, these trout are so aggressive. I've never seen a trout this size come out of the water like that for a plug. Are you kidding me? This is like an eight inch trout. Dude. That is absolutely crazy. See you, dude. Well, congratulations. You. Fish line. Texas boat, Texas fish line for the first time ever. Feels kind of right. I'm not going to lie to you. I know the guys from around here, if they watch that, or really anybody watches me get excited over a trout that small, I mean, I do. I mean, it ain't nothing but a deal. But I can, I've just knocked off a steak that I've never caught a fish in before. And I just caught one. Oh, that's a big one. Giant. Come off. Two fish, two casts. This one's significantly larger. you to join us hey 
That's pretty freaking cool. I thought that was a really big trout. That's pretty freaking cool. My first Texas trout one cast. My next cast, my first Texas redfish. Both of them are nothing to brag about, but, and he came off and hooked himself again here. Both of them are absolutely nothing to brag about, but you know what? I'm hitting milestones here. I'm absolutely hitting milestones. And that's like a little, maybe like a little 16 incher, 17 incher. Oh buddy, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, you can go home now. It's hard to hold them little ones like that because their mouth's so small, you don't really get anything to hold on to. That was pretty freaking cool. I'm not gonna lie, I'm so happy. Never in my life have I been so happy about a 15 or 16 inch red and an eight inch trout, nine inch trout. Never in my life have I been so excited about something. So, so in, insignificant. And that is because I caught first redfish and the first trout in Texas, came out here, didn't really know where to go. Just saw it, thought it looked good, knew there should be fish here, and kind of figured out something. I mean, obviously, I mean, dude, that ain't nothing. I mean, there's no reason to get excited about this fish other than the fact, oh, I had another one miss. Come get it. Please make that three fish three cast. Please do it. Make me so happy. These fish are obviously not right up on the bank right now. Which would make sense because the tide is not, it's got grass on it. There's no way he's coming back for it. Gosh, three cast, one miss, two fish. I thought that was a really big trout. I mean, not really big by Texas standards, but like really big for Panama City. And we've got some big trout, don't get me wrong, but I mean, on average. Oh my goodness gracious. Get your butt in this boat. More little trout. More little trout. Fortunately, friend, I hate to do this to you, but I'm not grabbing you. Call me a wimp, but I really prefer trebles, not my hand. Trout this small with a bait that's hooked on like all over them. Yeah, that's that's a recipe to uh, get hooked. There's nowhere to hold this fish. Call me a wimp in the comments. I don't care. But I'm not getting a speeding ticket and hooking myself back to back days. I don't care. I'm not scared of trout. I'm not scared of holding them or having hooks in a fish. Like, I don't care. But trout are really slimy, especially when they're that small. And when your bait is like covering their body where you'd hold them and you got treble hooks sticking everywhere, I mean, what else are you supposed to do with that fish? Like a freaking rock, dude, like a champ. Look at that. And it, the sonar worked, the side skin worked, and the down skin worked. Everything worked. The picture was not quite as clear, I noticed that. But it still worked. I still could read my depth and everything. Yeah, it actually turned out a lot better than I thought. You know, obviously, that is not the fish we're going to need to do any any good in the tournament. But I got to catch my first redfish in, uh, in Texas. I got to catch a couple trout in Texas for the first time. Had a pretty good one hit it and just tattooed it and didn't get hooked. Came flying clean out of the water. End over end. Never seen a trout hit like that for all these trout here just hit super aggressive um my camera's about to die so i'm going to wrap this video up in case it does die and i don't do it later like always guys if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe and stay tuned for tomorrow's video because tomorrow we are going to be getting out there bright and early before this crazy wind shows up 
and trying to really get on some big ones. So, thanks for watching again, guys, and bye.